In the 13th century, a mathematician named Leonardo Fibonacci discovered an important number sequence. It's a very uh, simple sequence of uh, numbers, starting with the, the number one twice. Each succeeding number in the sequence is the sum of the two preceding ones. So the sequence goes one, one, and two, and three, and five, and so on. And for reasons that are pretty mysterious, uh, this sequence of numbers seems to appear in a wide variety of places in the natural world. The logarithmic spiral depicts growth and expansion in the universe. For example, if we look at the branching tendencies of a tree, we see that as time progresses, one spiral expands as the number of branches increases. Spirals are reflected in structures as diverse as seashells, pine cones, sunflowers, whirlpools, and hurricanes. And as with fractals, we can see spirals at many different scales, from the growth of an embryo to a galaxy. Fractals and spirals reveal an underlying order within many structures that on the surface seem chaotic. Progress and growth seem to occur naturally by these forms. But there could be an even more intimate connection to nature. The importance of the Fibonacci sequence in nature, just like the importance of fractals and spirals, is its ability to create a robust and efficient method of growth. Uh, there's a wealth of biological, psychological, and sociological uh, evidence that supports the connection. For example, the Fibonacci sequence is in flower head arrangements. Then we find the Fibonacci ratio in heart muscles, in bronchial tube branching, even in the electrical potential of neurons, and as Roger Penrose pointed out, even in the arrangement of the brain's microtubules. The DNA molecule, the code for life, is made up of two intertwining spirals. We find the 0.618 ratio between the helix's width and cycle length. The Fibonacci ratio may even regulate the way we think. It's easy enough to imagine that, or make claims, well, this Fibonacci sequence and the way that it appears uh, in very many areas of life is just like some kind of number mysticism. Uh, it's, it's equally easy to take the position to say, look, when the same thing keeps occurring in such a wide spectrum of areas, there's, there has to be some underlying reason for it. Uh, I tend to the latter point of view. The robustness, resilience, and efficiency of all these universal forms, spirals, fractals, and Fibonacci relationships, may be connected to collective social mood. Nature prefers the most efficient path. In the case of the wave principle, though, deficiency is not in the individual's biology, but the efficiency in the progress of the species. Living creatures seem to be complicated structures produced from simple rules, simple laws of physics and chemistry. And a lot of the structure that you see in living creatures is organic but pattern structure, leaves on trees, ferns particularly, things like that, have the same feature that the Mandelbrot set has of, uh, you look at little pieces of them and they have lots and lots of detail. And in fact the little pieces look very similar sometimes to the whole thing. It's very tempting to compare the the way a simple formula produces a complicated Mandelbrot set with the way very tiny things in nature produce complicated organisms. And there are certainly some similarities in that there is the same kind of unfolding of a process. The instructions are there but not an actual description of the object.